Hi everyone, this is Fahad Mirza and I welcome you to the channel. After the wait of 8 months, Google has released the next version of their Gemma series of models. Around 8 months ago, I covered their Gemma 2 model. And we not only covered it from the local installation perspective, but we went deep into its architecture and we covered it from various angles including fine tuning rag and so on which you can check out on the channel. The model Gemma 2 was a deal breaker when it comes to the architectural improvements in the model and its performance was quite good 8 months ago if you would have compared it to the models at that time. This time this Gemma 3 release has again broken the glass. The reason why I am saying that is because the benchmarks which they have shared speak for themselves. For instance on MMLU Pro benchmark which is quite a hard benchmark I would say this Gemma 3 27 billion parameter has scored 67.5 which is close to Google's Gemini 1.5 Pro model and that is not something which is to be taken lightly and that is why in this video we are going to install this Gemma 3 27 billion instruction tuned model locally and we will play around with it on various tests. Now before I do that, let me give you a very brief quick overview of this model family. So Gemma is a family of lightweight state of the art open models from Google built from the same research and technology used to create the Gemini models and we have covered all of them in detail. This Gemma 3 family is multimodal which means that it can handle text and image input and it generates text output. It doesn't generate images by the way. The context window is huge. It is 128K given the size of the model. Another cool thing about this model is that it is multilingual and it supports, supports 140 languages all across the globe. If you look at the sizes which it is available in, it caters to every market. So it has a 1 billion which you can install and run on your mobile phone or any edge device. Then we have 4 billion for the regular laptop and it comes into the PyTorch or the pre-training I would say or the instruction tuned one. Then there is 12 billion parameter model which is I would say medium size and then this is a 27 billion which is top of the line instruction tuned one and that is what we are going to install. So if you are looking to deploy it in the enterprise level I would suggest go with the 27 billion. If you just want to play around with it then go with 1 billion or 4 billion mainly 4 billion suits the regular uh, GPU or the commodity GPU anyway. So now let's try to get it installed and then we will see how it works. Before that let me also give a huge shout out to Mast Compute who are sponsoring the VM and GPU for this video. If you're looking to rent a GPU on a very very affordable prices you can find the link to the website in video's description plus I'm also going to give you a discount coupon of 50% for a range of GPUs. For the purpose of this model given the size I'm going to use this Ubuntu 22.04 and this GPU card NVIDIA A100 with 80 GB of VRAM and as I said if you uh, don't have that much VRAM just go with the lower flavor of this model. First up, let me create a virtual environment with Conda. This is not mandatory, but I would highly, highly recommend you do that. And my environment is created. Next up, we need to install all the prerequisites. And let me paste all the prerequisites here, which we need to install. So you see, I'm installing this uh, Transformers model from the source and with the Gemma 2, Gemma 3, sorry. So this is going to take a minute or so, so let's wait for all of these prerequisites. Meanwhile, let me also introduce you to the sponsors of the video who are Camel AI. Camel is an open source community focused on building multi-agent infrastructures for finding the scaling laws of agents with applications in data generation, task automation, and world simulation. All the prerequisites are done. Next up, we need to log into Hugging Face because this is a gated model. What it means is that you would need to log into huggingface.co and from there you would just have to accept the terms and conditions of this model and then grab your read token from your profile. That token is free. So let me paste the token here. 
and then capital Y and I am logged in as you can see to in on the second last line of the output now let me launch my Jupyter notebook and then we are going to download and then play with the model and now let's download the model and I'm just using hugging face transformers pipeline and the model is being downloaded as you can see here there are 12 shards of it so let's wait for them to get downloaded and the second last shard is being downloaded and while that happens let's talk a bit more about the architecture of this 27 billion parameter model as i mentioned earlier that it supports up to 100 under 128k tokens for context window same for uh, 12 billion and 4 billion but for the 1 billion model it supports only 32k context window also it uses a 5 to 1 ratio of local to global attention layers to reduce kv cache memory explosions whereas if you look at its multi-modality for vision understanding it uses a tailored siglip vision encoder which i already have covered on the channel and that treats images as a sequence of soft tokens plus it uses an adaptive windowing algorithm which is called as pan and scan or p and s so p and s segments non-scare images into 896 by 896 crops that improves performance in high resolution images plus it has been pre-trained on 14 trillion tokens with increased multilingual data and it uses knowledge distillation with 256 logits per token weighted by teacher probabilities its post training is also quite interesting as it focuses on improving math, reasoning and multilingual abilities with a new approach that outperforms JAMA 2. So pretty good I would say um, because its doc visual question answering is also quite good and we are also going to test it out once it gets downloaded and I believe it's all done. So there you go so all the shards are loaded now. Okay next up let's do the inference i hope i already have the code so let me paste it here what i'm going to do i'm just going to select the local image and then i'm going to ask it the prompt what is in the image and this is a system prompt and this is a prompt template and then we are piping it to the model through tokenizer after encoding the prompt of course and then it is decoding it back and we are printing the output here so let's run it uh, let me first show you the image so this is the image of a bear which i have given it and this is just a brown bear as you can see standing here and meanwhile we were talking model has already given us the response so let's check it out so it says here is what i see in the image a brown bear the main subject of image is a large brown bear it appears to be standing in the shallow water possibly a stream or a river natural environment rocky ground bears posture overall the image captures a wild brown bear in its natural habitat that is actually quite good so i believe it's a correct answer very concise to the point and it has a little bit different thing is that it has divided the image into main subject and other stuff which is quite good and let's try out one more Okay, next up i am giving it this image which with, with the traffic jam and i'm asking it what is traffic situation in the image so let's run it let's also check the vram consumption so it is consuming over 54 gig of vram and i think for a 27 billion parameter multimodality it's not bad okay so that is good and meanwhile it has also given us a response so let's check it out so if you look at it it says based on the image the traffic situation appears to be very congested here is what i can observe and look at the observations at heavy traffic density slow or stopped movement mixed vehicle types nice so it's a typical urban environment and it says typical rush hour or situation causing significant traffic delays in a city so i think very very high quality response okay now let's check out the ocr and multilinguality so what i'm going to do first let me show you the images so i have this directory ocr on my local system there i have a lot of images which contain text from various languages so for example there is one image for english and there is a lot of text there 
then I have some French, I have German, I have Greek, I have this handwritten one, and then I have this uh, Hebrew, Hindi, Indonesian, Italian, Japanese, Korean, and this is a multi-language one where there are a lot of languages together, Persian, Polish, Portuguese, Romanian, runes, ancient runes, Russian, Spanish, Swahili. So uh, almost all the languages from across the world are covered, covered like uh, even Vietnamese, Urdu, Ukrainian and stuff. So let me run this. So what I'm going to do here, what this code is doing, it is going into this directory. It is iterating through this directory and then it is picking up image by image. It is giving us a prompt that first identify the language of text in the image, then extract all the text, format your response as this, and then I am printing the response. So let's run it and then I will just show you in real time. This is going to take a bit of time because it is going to iterate. It is going to extract the text. There you go. So first is handwritten one language is English. So while it happens, let me also quickly check. We will randomly check what is happening here. So this is a handwritten one. There you go. Now, if you look at this, this is quite hard. Yes, language is English. And if I quickly check it through, so it says I love handwritten letters. The way the words get jumbled up when the writer is excited. Very nice. And then you see where it is cutting like a writer is trying. So it says writer is trying not to make so it didn't pick up uh, didn't uh, mention this cutting here which is good and then it has done it wonderfully well so it have uh, hasn't even missed a dot there you see there is a dot after love so very very fine model i would say and then let's look at the persian and i'm just going to show you the persian here I'm sorry, I have to go back and forth because I'm just doing it in real time. So there you go. So Persian, it has selected the Persian, Farsi. And if I quickly look at it, it looks good to me. So again, um, if you are the speaker of that language, please, please kindly help me out. Look at the image, look at the uh, um, OCR and tell us what do you think as a native language speaker. So I will take your advice on that. So for me, just visually looks okay to me. And then we have this Arabic, um, Arabic also looks quite good to me. So I'll just go up, should be the first one because of letters here. So yeah, so you see Arabic also looks quite good. Yep, visually looks good. English we already have checked. German, yes, so German also quite looks quite good to me. I'm not going to check all of it, don't worry. So German looks good. Romanian, Chinese, let's check the Chinese. Chinese is sometimes uh, models are a bit clunky with Chinese. There you go. So simply for Chinese, visually speaking, looks spot on to me. But please confirm. Italian and then this is a multi one. I wanted to check the multi one. So let's check out the multi here, which contains basically multi means that it contains multiple languages. That's all. So it's, it has very, very correctly identified all the languages like English, French, Spanish, German, Portuguese, Chinese, Turkish, Hindi, Russian in it. And if I quickly look at it, look, it is, is just amazing. I'm not sure about this Bashar. I don't think so. This is right. Arabic one. Uh, but mo I think two words are right. The other one doesn't look right to me. Chinese, if I quickly look at this Hanzi script, looks okay to me. So rest of it, really, really good stuff. Czech looks good to me. Turkish looks good. And then this is Japanese. And because my context window is done, so that is why it has just been up to here. Or maybe it is still printing, I guess. Yeah, Urdu one is here. It is still printing all of them. So Urdu because uh, I can read Urdu. So yes, Urdu is good. Yep. So I think that look when it says 144 languages, it is spot on, I believe. So it is still printing them out. So I'll just let it run for a bit and we can check it out. So as it has done Vietnamese just now, let's check the Vietnamese. I should have done it in the alphabetical order, but that's fine. So look, visually Vietnamese look also quite good to me. And then 
runes my favorite ones let's let's check out if it can read the runes which is ancient i guess um from the northern europe language so let's check out the runes here so yes it is a elder futhark transliteration and it has done well not exactly correct but i think better than most of the models seek wisdom and embrace the journey yep that's good okay and then swahili one of the beautiful language from africa looks good to me swahili polish is also okay french is yeah, it's a very common so it should be good let's see what comes next yep spanish looks good to me so european languages are quite good in Gemma, as always and the greek also looks good so look i'm not going to check out all the languages because i think i have put in like 30 40 languages there so all in all i am very much satisfied with the multilinguality of this model so let's proceed further and check a couple more next up i am checking the tabular analysis uh, so i'm asking it which model has the second highest download size from the image and it says moon dream 2 billion int 4 which is the second one with the download size of 1167 spot on let's see if model knows about the future so i'm going to ask it what this couple is going to do next let's see what model says let's wait for the model to come back okay so model has given quite a good answer here so it says uh, exchange vows and then they're looking at each other with loving expression suggesting they're about to say i do or have just done so first dance photo shoot join the reception enjoy a quiet moment given the setting and their expression it seems most likely they're about to exchange vows or enjoying a moment right after quite meaningful i would say but correct okay next up i am saying that this girl is on driver's seat of a self-driving car is it okay to do what she is doing so let's see if model is able to detect what exactly she is doing and then if it is okay or not model is taking a bit of a time here and there you go so model says based on the image the girl is indeed in the driver's seat of a car and is looking at her phone that's good whether it is okay to do what she is doing depends on whether the car is truly self-driving and what level of self-driving very good if the car is a level 5 autonomous vehicle which is full self-driving if the car is genuinely capable of handling all driving tasks in all conditions then she could be doing other things like using her phone even with level 5 it's generally recommended to remain attentive that's good if the car is not fully self-driving level 0 to 4 it is not okay and is dangerous in the image it is difficult to determine the level of automation the car appears to be moving based on the background wow very nice this is what i wanted from the model look at this uh, if you really think about it this is something out of this world that indeed i mean because it is sort of a passing win window important note distracted driving is a major cause of accident it is always best to prioritize, prioritize safety and focus on the task of driving and i believe this is the first model which has detected this that this is a moving car so for that i think uh, this model is worth putting it into production very very impressive so look i believe one of the best models i have tested so far i would even say this year for vision and multimodal in when it comes to text and vision let me know your thoughts i will drop the link to this model in, in video's description if you like the content please consider subscribing to the channel if you're already subscribed please share it among your network as it helps a lot thank you for watching